yeah too, how are you? And welcome to today's reading lesson. Now, as you've probably guessed today, we are going to be carrying on with Fantastic Mr Fox and looking at chapter 10, which is called Bogus's Chicken House number one. Now, the reading skill that we're going to be looking at today is prediction. So we're going to be thinking about what has already happened in the story to help us to predict what might happen next. So to help us to look into the future and to help us with our prediction today, we have our friend predicting Pip. Now, what questions might predicting Pip ask us? Well, predicting Pip might ask us what will happen next. She might even ask us how will the story end? As well as this, she might ask us what will a certain character say in a certain situation? So there we go. We have predicting Pip to help us today. Now, not only are we going to be predicting today, but like every lesson, we're also going to be looking at vocabulary as we read. So we're going to be stopping at certain points in the chapter looking at a word, looking at the words around it and trying to work out its meaning. Now, before we do any work on vocabulary or on prediction, I would like to see what you can remember from the chapter that we looked at just before half term, which was chapter nine called Mr. Fox has a plan. So your retrieval activity today is to tell me, retell the last chapter, so chapter nine in five points. So you have five fingers and you need to give me one point for each finger. So what are the five most important things that happened in the last chapter? OK, so pause the video now and have a go at writing five points. OK, yeah, two. Have you got a point for each finger on your hand? Fantastic. Well done. So as you were having a go, I also had a go at this activity. Would you like to see what I came up with my five points? Now, don't worry if yours aren't exactly the same as mine. OK, so my first point was the foxes were slowly starving to death while the farmers were surrounding their home. So yes, remember, the uh, foxes didn't have any food for many days, did they? Because the farmers and their workers were around, surrounding their home, so they couldn't escape and they couldn't get any food. And this was worrying Mr Fox, wasn't it? So my second point is Mr Fox thought very carefully about a plan and eventually came up with one. Remember, he jumped to his feet, didn't he? He stirred. Now, what happened next? Was he very happy with his plan? Well, no, he was starting to think of problems, wasn't he? So therefore, my next point is Mr Fox didn't think his plan would work because it involved more digging and they were all too tired. Now, did the small foxes accept this problem? No, they didn't, did they? They told their dad that they could do it. So therefore, the small foxes convinced Mr Fox that the plan would work. So already I've got four points from chapter nine, the four most important points. So what will my last one be? After the small foxes convinced Mr Fox that the plan would work, what did Mr Fox and the small foxes do? Well, Mr Fox and the small foxes left the house without Mrs Fox as she was too weak to help. So Mr Fox and the small foxes have set off on their adventure to escape. OK, so did you manage to get some points for chapter nine? Fantastic. Well done. As I said, don't worry if they're not exactly the same as my five points. So let's move on to our chapter for today, which is chapter 10, Bogus's Chicken House number one. OK, this time we must go in a very special direction, said Mr Fox pointing sideways and downwards. So he and his four children started to dig once again. The work went much more slowly now, yet they kept at it with great courage. And little by little, the tunnel began to grow. OK, now here it tells us that they kept at it with great courage. OK, now what has happened before when the foxes have tried to escape. Well, the farmers have beaten them, haven't they? They didn't try to escape. They didn't attempt. They didn't manage, sorry, to escape the last time, did they? Because the foxes were too clever for them and they started digging their way in with the mechanical shovels. So therefore, they're being very brave, aren't they? To have another go, even though they're very, very tired, they're being brave and they're trying to beat the farmers and to escape. So therefore, what does the word courage mean with great courage? Well, it means 
the ability to control your fear in a dangerous or difficult situation. So courage is a noun. And as I said, the foxes are being very brave, aren't they? Because they know that the farmers and their workers, there's lots of them out there, they could catch them at any time. So it's quite a dangerous situation. And they're probably quite scared, aren't they? So therefore, they're showing great courage. They are being very brave. Now, courage has two syllables. Are you ready to clap them with me? Three, two, one, courage. And as I said, a synonym for courage is bravery. So they're showing great bravery. They're not getting scared and they're not worrying about the farmers. They are just carrying on because they're really, really, really desperate to escape. OK, now an antonym of courage is fearful because they're definitely not fearful, are they? Because they know that this could be quite dangerous, but they're still being brave enough. They're still being courageous enough to try it. Now, in this context, we are using courage to describe the foxes, but you can also use courage in different contexts. For example, the firefighter showed a lot of courage when he saved the people from the burning building. So even though saving them from a burning building was very dangerous for the firefighter because there's fire around, he showed great courage, great bravery and went into that building and saved them. OK, so there we go. They are showing great courage. The foxes are because the farmers might catch them. We never know. OK, so let's carry on. Dad, I wish you would tell us where we are going, said one of the children. Next page. I dare not do that, said Mr Fox, because this place I am hoping to get to is so marvellous that if I described it to you now, you would go crazy with excitement. And then if we fail to get there, which is very possible, you would die of disappointment. I don't want to raise your hopes too much, my darlings. OK, so he's not telling the small foxes where they're going, is he? And he says that he doesn't want to raise their hopes too much okay because he said that they might get there but they might not get there and remember at the end of the last chapter the small foxes definitely thought they could do it so they have got high hopes okay now what is a hope well a hope is a noun and it means the belief that something you want will happen so the small foxes have the hope that they are going to escape from the farmers so therefore, it is something that they want to happen and they think that it will happen. They have a lot of hope that it will happen. And therefore, Mr Fox, because he's not sure whether it will happen or not, he doesn't want to raise their hopes. So he doesn't want to tell them that they will definitely escape because they might not. And by telling them that they will definitely escape, they might raise their hopes. So make their belief that something they want to happen will happen even stronger, OK? So some synonyms for hope are wish and desire. So if you have a wish for something, you really want it to happen. If you have a desire something, you really want something. OK, now we have a different usage here. So is there any hope that they will be home in time? OK, so maybe they need to go somewhere and the hope is that they will be back in time. So it's the belief that something you want to happen. So they want them to be home in time will happen. OK, so they really want them to be home in time. Now, another usage is she's very ill, but there is still hope that she will recover. OK, so this girl is ill, but at the same time, maybe her family have a belief that she will recover. OK, and therefore that's their hope that their belief that she will recover will actually happen. OK, and the belief and um, the hope that the small foxes have is that they're going to escape. Now, we have a question to answer now, a prediction question that we're going to do together. Now, where do you think Mr Fox and the small foxes are going and why? Now, let's have a look at the key words in our question. So our first key word is where. Now, remember, when we have where at the beginning of a question, what will the answer contain? Well, yes, it will be a place, won't it? OK, so that's our first key word. Now, our second key word is Mr. Fox and the small foxes. So we're not looking about where Mrs. Fox is going, 
we're thinking about where Mr Fox and the small foxes specifically are going. Not the farmers, not Mrs Fox, just Mr Fox and the small foxes. And we're looking at where they're going. And then the next keyword is why. So there's almost two questions in this question. You have to say why, uh, where you think they're going and then also explain why you think that. Now let's have a look at what we already know from the story. Well, we know that the foxes are extremely weak from not eating, aren't they? They have gone a long time, I think it was three days, without eating because the farmers and their workers are surrounding their home. So they can't get out and they can't get something to eat. So they can't sneak down to um, the farms to get their food for the evening. So therefore they are very weak. And Mrs Fox is so weak that she hasn't been able to come with them. OK, let's have a look what else we know. Well, we also know that the farmers are surrounding the foxes whole. OK, so therefore they haven't been able to get any food. Now, we also know that there is no one on the farms. And that is because the farmers are surrounding the foxes whole. So if they are extremely weak from not eating, because we know that from what we've read already, and the farmers are not on the farm, because they are surrounding the fox's hole. And we also know that they are digging, okay, so they haven't got up the hole, they're digging somewhere. Where do we think they are going? Well, I came up with an answer to this question, so let me show you my answer. So it is colour coded and I'll explain that in a little while. So I think that Mr Fox and the small foxes are going to one of the farms. OK, so in my first sentence, I've explained, I've answered the question where. OK, and I've said that I think they are going to the one of the farms. Now, remember, we don't know yet where they are going because we are only making a prediction. We are basing our answer on what we know has already happened and we're predicting what's going to happen in the future. So I think that Mr Fox and the small foxes are going to one of the farms. And I think this because they are extremely weak from not eating, okay? And can you see that I've written in a full sentence there? So I've even taken a part of the question out. So Mr. Fox and the small foxes are going. I've lifted that straight out of the question and used it in my full sentence. And I've put, I think, because it is a prediction. I think that Mr. Fox and the small foxes are going to one of the farms. Now, why do I think this? Well, that is in the purple. So I'm explaining further why I think this is where they are going. We know from the end of the previous chapter that the foxes are very weak from not eating and therefore I predict that they are going to get food to take back to Mrs Fox. So we know that Mrs Fox is back at their house and she's very weak, she hasn't been able to come with them and they are all very very hungry. So the fact that they are very very hungry gives them a motive, means that they really really want to go and get some food. So that is probably where they're going. And they can get that food from one of the farms, can't they? Because they know that because they've done it in the past. OK, then we have the sentence in the green. And it says also the farmers and their workers are all surrounding Mr Fox's house and therefore there will be no one on the farm to catch them. So not only are they hungry and very weak, but this is another reason why they are going to that farm, because the farmers are all surrounding their house so therefore they know they're not going to be on the farm so there'll be nobody to catch them so therefore I've written my first sentence which answers the question where and then I have written two other sentences to explain so I've given my first reason for why I think this in purple and then I've given my next reason for why I think this in green okay so let's have a look at the next part of that page that we were looking at go back okay so for a long long time they kept on digging for how long they did not know because there was no days and no nights there in the murky tunnel but at last mr fox gave the order to stop i think he said we had better take a peep upstairs now and see where we are i know where i want to be but i can't possibly be sure we're anywhere near it.